Hello and welcome to Beyond the Boundary. My name is Josh. It's fantastic to have you on board again. We're into round five. Gee, it's gone quick. Nick, on my right, how are you, mate? I'm brilliant. Massive win over the Eagles on the weekend, so I'm very happy about that. A bit of gloating in the Beyond the Boundary room. And Vinay, on my left, how are you? Great to be here, Josh, as usual. Massive round coming up. Massive, so I cannot wait to get into it. All right, boys, let's jump into our tips. Uh, we all got five last week. Five out of nine, so I'm still in the lead by one. Yeah, I'll by uh, one. Keep reminding you of that. He hangs on. He hangs on for another round. He does, he does. But there, there's a few different tips this week, so we'll have to wait and see. Now, Nick, you want to well. raise something before we jump into the games? I do. The um, names on jumpers this week, I think it's an absolute brilliant initiative. And um, to celebrate the new names on jumpers, I've actually got you something, Ricard. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> he has. I know exactly what it <laughs> he is. He brought so. it up before. Here you go. I check know this exactly out. what okay. it is. So, so here we have, uh, I know how, many, how much you like Josh Caddy. Get all right? the ding. So I have there my Josh Caddy jersey right here. Gee, that's two. That's two in ten seconds. Ding ding. And uh, for Rickard, I've got you your very own. You might even help me. You might even help me hold Are it up here. Are you kidding? Look at this. His oh, very own. It's, like, it's got the bull. Tags and all. Josh Caddy jersey. The bull. To celebrate the names on jumpers that's this bread week. Red spanking you, Rickard. Is that seriously for me? That's seriously for you. Oh, thank you. That's very kind of you. I'm, I'm glad you like it. Um, wear it with pride. Oh, I don't know about that. It's going to be worth a lot of money in a couple of years. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. Anyway, on to the expensive s- toilet paper you've got there, Josh. <laughs> Very expensive. Um, and a reminder, each week, because it's kind of hard to tip on a Monday and, you know, things change during the week with, um, with team yep. ins and outs and stuff yep. like that, uh, late injuries, um, we do revise our tips on a Friday night. We're going to start doing that on AFL season information yep. and off-season news. The link's right above Ricard's head there. Um, so be sure to check that out. We will still give our tips tonight. But we will revise the tips if anything changes. It's on, unlikely. On the like night. we're not going to be giving our tips tonight and then making nine changes. Yeah. Only in the instance where they, you know, for example, Fremantle against uh, Hawthorne, we saw that we tipped some of us tipped Fremantle, and then it turned out that Barlow and five two massive exclusions. That's something that would warrant a change. But yeah. we will own, we'll do it very like you know restrictively. So yeah, obviously. Um, into the first game of round five, we're up to it's Brisbane versus Richmond uh, Friday night at the Gabba. Thursday night. Thursday night at the Gabba. Thursday night. Thursday night at the Gabba. Uh, last time these two teams met, it was Richmond by 23 points. Vinay, what's your take on this game? I watched uh, both Brisbane and Richmond on the weekend, and um, it was it was very interesting. I think I've got a lot to say about Brisbane in particular. Yep. What I will say about Richmond, though, is that they weren't actually that far off. As in, they did lose by 38 points, but you look at the stats and it doesn't really make sense in the sense that Richmond won the contested possession count, they also won the centre clearance count. They also won the stoppage clearance count. And they won by a fair margin in those as well. And he, they didn't lose the inside 50 count by that much. I think what really, really hurt them was they only managed five marks inside 50 versus Collingwood's 15. So that's what hurts you. When you've got all those inside 50 entries, but you're not actually getting, you know, putting it in the hands of your forwards, that's where I think Delidio has really hurt them, the loss of Delidio, because he's one of those sharp users that will find a chest. Cochin, you know... There's been a lot of controversy about that. I won't get into that, but he's why not? Well, I kind of did want to get into that. Um, what do we think about McCaffer's, t- McCaffer's tactics on Cochin then? Um, Cochin had absolutely, you know, no influence on the game compared to the influence he usually has. Um, McCaffer's absolutely had his number there. What do we think about that? I, I think personally, I, I've got nothing wrong with it. Yeah, I got nothing wrong with that. Okay, McCaffer gave away a few free kicks, but his job was to nullify Cochin's impact on the game. He did 95% of things within the rules um, and the things he didn't got picked up by the umpires. There was a great point. Um, Nathan Buckley made in the press conference. They said to him, um, what do you think about... Yeah, this was good. Yeah, what do you think about um, him not getting picked up? And he said he didn't get picked up and Cochin got five free kicks for it. So, there you go, yeah. You know, yeah. it's not going completely unnoticed. Yeah. Um, five free kicks against is, is a pretty substantial figure. Um, so it is getting noticed when he, when he does step over the line, but obviously he is treading right on that line the entire time he's playing the game. I think it's difficult, you know. A lot of the star plays, you see guys like Gary Ablett, Joe Watson, Pendlebury, Dangerfield, they get a tag every week and they have been getting tags every week for more than a year now. This is not the first season that's happened to them. And they've all found ways to cope with it. I think as much as tagging is an art in itself, breaking a tag is just as big an art and a skill to have. And, you know, the best players are able to do it. They're able to find ways. And one thing Cochin mentioned on game day that, I think he needed more support from his teammates. Yeah. Richmond were really lacking, you know. You can point the finger at Cochin for not lifting his game, but you've got to support the guy that's being tagged out of his skin. 
it comes down a lot to that as well. So his support staff need to help him out. And it's really showing how valuable Deledio is to that side. Oh, for sure. With Cochin's impact nullified to that extent and the performance that Richmond put up in comparison to when Deledio and Cochin are both together having those big numbers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brisbane boys, they were their last two weeks have been pretty ordinary to say the least. His predictions are pretty good. At the start of the season. What was his prediction? I didn't think he said he'd finish second last or something, didn't he? Bottom four, I said, and they're right. on the bottom of the ladder at the moment. So. I said it first. Oh, here we go. Oh, down, ladies. Anyway, anyway. Uh, 113 <laughs> points on the weekend oh. against Port Adelaide um, and 53 the week before against the Gold Coast Suns. They lost every single stat except <laughs> clangers and I think centre clearances I'm they won by give one. I'm an absolute d- baking here. Over Brisbane. to Lakshman here. I'm looking so annoyed this. with them. Lakshman's roast. Lakshman's and I'm roast. not even a Brisbane supporter, but Lepic is driving me nuts with the way that he's playing them. Brisbane lost every single stat except the clangers and the centre clearances, which they won by one. And were losing for most yep. of the game. So they won by one centre clearance. They had one less tackle, all right? So they lost the tackle count and they lost the disposal count by 114. That's ridiculous. They had 114 more opportunities to lay one tackle and they still lost the tackle count. All they had to do was lay two more tackles. That's two tackles for every 70 disposals or one tackle every 70 disposals. And the, hey, presto, they finished with 73 tackles. Tom Rockliffe had 13 of those. That's a fifth of the entire team. You've got 22 guys on that park. And this one man has amassed a fifth of the entire team's tackles. Now, whether that says Rockliffe is a very good player, which he is, or whether Brisbane's intensity is lacking, which it is, you know, that's open to discussion. But the way Brisbane are playing at the moment... I know that a Brisbane supporter recently said they are damn lucky that Carlton lost to Melbourne because otherwise every single media outlet in the country would be roasting that Brisbane football the club. The blowtorch would be out. They would be destroying that football club. And that's they why you listen to Beyond fortunate. the Boundary because we're doing it right Carlton now. is shepherding. They are literally shepherding Brisbane at the moment from the bullets of agony that the media are shooting at them. <laughs> All right, boys, who are we tipping? Um, geez, with that roasting of those two teams, it's um, it's oh. hard to tip one. Um, I think Richmond will bounce back this week. Um, Thirty points, I've got them by. What do you think, boys? I'm going to go Richmond by twenty five points. Yeah, Richmond too easy for me. But I just can't tip Brisbane. I can't see who they're going to beat. To yeah. be honest, I can't see them getting outside the top four. Uh, top four, bottom four. So. Um, yeah, Richmond by 32 for me. We should have this in front of us, but do Melbourne play at the Gabba this season? Because um, uh, Carlton play at the Gabba this season? Carlton does. You'd think I'm that pretty would, sure. There's a chance. At, on current form, <laughs> that looks like their only chance for a win. But the thing is, I can see Carlton picking up their act. We will talk about that yeah. a bit later, though. Well, yeah, good point. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Collingwood versus North Melbourne, uh, Saturday afternoon at the MCG. Last time these two teams met, it was North Melbourne by 11 points. Josh, what do you think? North Melbourne, all of a sudden after their round one debacle... Against Essendon, they're sitting three and one, and nice and pretty. And I give them every chance to knock over the Pies this week. Can we just pretend there's only eight games each week? I think I'm zero and four for North Melbourne tipping. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we can't. <laughs> um, but <laughs> but plainly, no, we can't. But no, there's one player I want to put to you that I think's the next best young midfielder coming through the ranks. I think I know who he is. What, who is he? Is he Ben Cunnington? He is Ben Cunnington. Okay. He had 30 disposals on the weekend, yeah. 11 clearances. 10 tackles, uh, and I think there was so- something else in the doubles as well. Yep. Um, he's just been superb this year. Yeah, he has. He has been an absolute revelation. He's only 22 years of age. He's a hard-nosed inside ball winner, which is what I love about him, because it's often those footballs that you see rise up. Um, he wins his own ball. His contested ball is amazing. And the, the other one was 20 contested possessions out of 30. Oh. There it was. <laughs> and he's not even getting a tag. No. That's, that's what shocks me about that. You've got Daniel Wells and Brent Harvey getting the tag. And yet Cunnington still manages to find his own ball. That's really, really impressive. And another thing is he had, what, 11 tackles or something? 11, yeah. Yeah, so he's, he's a real, real find for North Melbourne. Someone made the point during the week that if you're the third best midfielder at a football club, um, you're going to get a lot of opportunities to play very, very well because yep. obviously you can't tag everyone. Exactly. And with Zebo, Zebel and Swallow out at the moment yep. for North Melbourne, um, Cunnington's just really making the most of it and putting in some great The thing is North Melbourne have this sort of gift in that their midfielders are rarely tagged because they've got these two guys in Wells and Harvey that are so damaging on the wings. Yep. Opposition clubs feel it's more necessary to tag these playmakers than it is to tag you know inside ball winners like Swallow, Zebel and Cunnington. So Swallow does get tagged, don't get me wrong, but what I'm saying is that most of the time, Cunnington and Zebel will not get a tag at all. 
So it's frightening to think that Ben Cunnington, he could continue this form. He could continue racking up 30 touches every game he plays. If he can do it against the, you know, Sydney Swans in Sydney in the horrid way. conditions, what's saying you can't do it again? It's the, torrential conditions. Yeah. It's going to be a good... We'll get to that later. It's going to be a good parameter of that point, actually, this week because he's coming up against the serial tagger, McAffer. Exactly. I reckon he'll go to him, too. McAffer, you reckon? Yeah. I reckon he might go to Del Santo. Yeah, it's a fair call. Yeah. That's a fair call. Yeah. I'll but go on Cunnington, but yep. you go okay. Del Santo. But on current form, they really need to watch him closely because he's absolutely yep. tearing up the op- yep. opposition at the moment. Yep. Anyway, Collingwood, um, Vene, I'll ask you again. Yep. What's wrong with Travis Clogg? I'm not too sure. Look, he was my Coleman medal winner pick at the start I, of the I year. I wasn't going to let you get away with that. I was about to say. No, no, no. You no, did I tip stand him for the Coleman. No, no, yeah. Yeah. And he was the Coleman medal pick for a lot of other... You stand by it? He's 13. Okay, I'm I'm I, I stand by what I've said in the, the sense that yeah. I've said it and I'm not going to shy away from okay, it and make yeah. excuses yep. now because yep. I did say it. And, you know, a lot of other media renowned journalists, they also thought Travis Cloak was going to be at least up there, if not, you know, going to win the Coleman. He's, he's shot for confidence. His can, we, confidence. can we just reiterate? He's kicked two goals in four games. Yep. His confidence is absolutely rock bottom at the moment. He's not the Travis Cloak that we are used to seeing. He's not taking any big contested marks. I'll admit that in the game against Geelong, he was stiff on a couple of occasions. But, you know, that, you can only take that so far. I thought, you know, he had a good opportunity against Richmond. He's, he's got good form on them. He's kicked big against them in the past. What, what do you think it is, Ricard? It doesn't help that he's coming up against what I think is the best defender in the game at the moment is Scott Thompson Scotty. this week. But, um, yeah, he's, he's struggling big time at the moment, and we all know that his uh, contested marking is his big strength. So he's not really getting his hands on the ball. Yeah, he's not. Um, and his, his defender's uh, opponent, I should say, is, is tearing him to pieces at the moment. Something I'm very interested to see is the effect that Ben Reid coming back into the side will have on Travis Cloak's performance. Um, because on one hand, you can look at it as, you know, Travis Cloak's the big forward target. He should be getting uh, more of the entries in 50 towards him and capitalising on that. But on the other hand, um, there's the bigger chance that he'll be double teamed while Ben Reid's not in the team because, you know, that other big tall defender's only got Jesse White to contain yeah. outside of Travis Cloak. In saying that, though, Jesse White did kick three goals against he the did, Tigers. Yeah, he was very yeah. impressive. He was, he was very good and probably played his best game of his career. Oh, for sure. It, it was very, sure. very good yeah. Yeah. on, um, what was it, Friday night? Yeah. So, yeah. Who are, we t- who are we tipping, boys? Uh, I can't go past North. They're really? Just playing, they're just playing some very good football. They beat Collingwood at the MCG. Okay, maybe it was a nothing game last year in round 23. No team could go either, anywhere. Yep. But, yeah, I'm liking the way North's playing at the moment. I think they'll get up by 14 points. But no. It's interesting. I've had a close look at this. North, um, the smothering against Sydney. North had 20, Sydney had 5. That shows me that their pressure is excellent at the moment. And it seems like the teams that are winning games at the moment are the ones with the defensive pressure. Hawthorne let through so few errors against Gold Coast or against anyone. And they're just smashing teams week in, week out. Geelong didn't let West Coast score for three quarters. I'm seeing a pattern here that the teams that have the better defensive pressure are the ones that are winning games. And North is doing that to a T. Another thing I'll say is that North had a comprehensive victory over Sydney. Whereas Collingwood, they lost the, the clearances. They also lost the contested possessions against Richmond. But they managed to get away with the win. So it wasn't as convincing. And these two factors are going to make me tip north by about 15. Jeez, boys. This, I think this is the first time this has actually happened. But you've actually changed my mind here. Um, you made some brilliant points on North Melbourne. And I will be tipping North Melbourne. Okay. I'll tip them by one point. Going against the run sheet as always. Against the run sheet. Um, Don't know we have these deals. <laughs> the third game of the round is Sydney versus Fremantle. Saturday afternoon at the SCG. Last time these two teams played, it was Fremantle in the prelim by 25 points. Boys, if Sydney wins this game, I don't even know who to tip for the rest of the season because these these tips have just been so topsy-turvy so far and Sydney is baffling me, baffling me with what's going on up there. Uh, absolutely, I have to agree, and uh, I thought Sydney would be in the top four at this stage of the oh, year. Me too. And I honestly thought they might have been four and zip, but oh, for sure. Um, I don't know what's what's wrong with the Sydney Swans at the moment. They're a shadow of the form's p- former selves. Um, Dan Hanabry, I gave him my who's not this yeah, morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think he's really down on form. Uh, Kieran Jack as well probably mm. could be better. Uh, Kennedy's probably been taken another step from what he was last year. He had a semi poor year last year. But he's, he's risen again this year. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know what's wrong with this Sydney Swans. Now, Vinay, a uh, $10 million man, Lance Franklin, oh, no. played in more Here torrential go again. more torrential rain <laughs> conditions on the weekend. What did you think of his performance? He played in more torrential game conditions. What about that man, Aaron Black? 
He's a he's a tall forward. He had he had a, a supposedly, athletic as well. He had supposedly the best defense, one of the best defense. He had Ted Richards, Heath Grundy, some of the best defenders in the game on him. Yep. And did he not kick goals? <laughs> yes, he did. I'm sick of this excuse. Good key forwards find a way. And Lance Franklin, it wasn't just the fact that he didn't kick goals. His game in general was an absolute. It was the worst key po- forward performance of the week. I watched his entire performance. He for, first of all he. The one chance he had to kick a goal, he got a free kick on the 50-meter arc. It was in the buddy zone, as people are calling it. He went back. He took his time. In fact, he took so much time. He just, you know, he strolled back. He put his mouth guard and his whatever it was. He's <laughs> having a look at the sky. He's going, yeah, I'm buddy. I'm lining up for a goal. And all of a sudden, he's taken 30 seconds. The umpire's gone play on because yeah. buddy's taken that long. He's turned it over. North Melbourne's kicked a goal. About 10 minutes later, he's given Scott Thompson a whack over the noggin. He's almost, got reported. Almost sat out for a week. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So <laughs> there are not many measures of what a poor game entails, but to <laughs> not kick a goal as the number one forward target, get reported, and also give up a chance. I don't, I don't, I don't know how often any key forward. How, when was the last time you remember somebody lining up for goal and then actually taking too long and then turning it over and a goal resulting? Probably in the first year that it was introduced. There you go. But, so, um, you, you know, I don't want to dwell on Franklin because Sydney have more problems again. yet. <laughs> I, before we move off Franklin, I'm yeah. sorry to do this to you no, again. It's fine. But I have, I have seen one point. We've just been talking about Travis Cloak. Yeah. Ben Reid is out of that side at the moment. Kurt, Kurt Tippett, Tippett is out yeah. of the Sydney side. It'll be very interesting to see, like what I said about Ben Reid coming in, yeah, yeah, the yeah. influence Kurt Tippett coming back in the side has very because cool. then teams can't double team Franklin anymore. Very good call. Sam Reid as well. He's out of the Sam side. Sam Reid is very good call. Very good call. I so, definitely agree with that. Yeah. Yep. I think, you know, Buddy gets all the attention at the moment. And the way that Scott Thompson was defending him was that I do not care if you leave this, fo- this 50 meter arc. You can do whatever you want up the ground. That's not my prerogative. And that's why he was getting so much of those intercept marks because he was, he was pretty much isolated. So we promise you guys this is the last time we spend half the Sydney preview on, on Lance Franklin. Until Kurt Tippett gets back, we'll So we, I we'll do think this. that, you know, Sydney are lacking forward power. It's true. Yeah. You know, their number one ranked player at the moment is Luke Parker, which at the start of the year, if you had to pick between McVeigh, Kennedy, Jack, Hanabry and Parker, ha- Parker probably would have been last yeah. if you had to say who's their number one ranked player. So, you know, that says a lot. And he's also number one for Clangers at the club, which again says a lot. It's, it's you know, Kieran Jack came out and said today that the club's feeling the pressure. You know, they know that they're under pressure. Yeah, Sydney, they've got to respond to it. Fremantle did. They're under immense pressure when they were facing that Essendon outfit. And they did. They responded in a big way. Can Sydney respond? Pre-season, we looked at this club and we said, in our season predictions, and we said this is probably the best midfield in the comp um, with Jack, Hanabry, McVeigh running through it. Yep. Um, and at the moment, all those those three names that I've just mentioned just aren't quite up to the standard that we expected. Um, Hanabry, probably most of all. Um, so only five rounds in. But they really need to stand up if there any chance of top four is starting to look shaky at the moment for them. You can rule out top four. Rule out top four already. Yeah, rule out sure. Top four. Yeah, I can see at least five clubs that have a better chance. Than I, I think there's still a chance. But oh, there's, st- there's still a chance, but yeah. they're just not playing well enough. They go, they're, well, the way we've all tipped, they're going to be one and four. Yeah. They're going to need a mighty effort to beat Fremantle this week. Yeah. Um, they're long odds to go two and three. Um, I think you can almost rule out top the way four. they're playing at the moment. I can see Collingwood, North, Frio, Port Adelaide, Geelong, Essendon, West Coast, all beating. Yeah, yeah, to be honest, I can see all of them beating the Sydney side. Anyway, Fremantle, Fremantle. <laughs> uh, yeah, w- watch them yesterday uh, against my boys, and I must say, I was I I went into that game, and I just said to myself, I can't see us winning. I just can't see he us did. winning. He did say it. He did say they'd come back. He um, was adamant. And it didn't help with the loss of Chapman, Fletcher and Myers yeah, pre-game. And Goddard went yeah. down. Goddard went down in the warm-up. Not an excuse. Fremantle were the better side all day. But their pressure was back. Yeah, it was. They were back yeah, in front of their, their home crowd. They had the crowd behind them. Their pressure was back from the first bounce. And they controlled that game from the first bounce. And I never really thought um, Essendon were a chance, to be honest. I said before the game against Hawthorne about Fremantle that in a couple of weeks' time we can look back on Fremantle and think, why do we ever tip against them? And they put up their bad performance against Hawthorne and then Vinay and I both tipped Essendon. And now I'm thinking, why did I ever tip against them? They were, they, Essendon, of course, were undermanned, but they were clinical. Fremantle were just clinical. So, so were Fremantle. Don't, don't rule that out. Five, Mundy, Barlow. Mundy went down at halftime. Yeah. Barlow as well. Uh, Walters is a quality four. Main. Chris Main, Gary Gibbardson. They had their outs as well. So. And, and Sanderlands, we spent 
last week knocking Sandlands. He was hitting to advantage. He was tackling the the pressure, not just as a ruckman, but as around the ga- ground, just as a big man, was exceptional from him. You can, do, you can do anything against two part-time ruckmen, though. I guess he can. That's, that was an interesting argument raised by Lee Matthews as well. It was, it was. I don't think he's overrated in a sense. Um, I can see where Lee Matthews was coming from, but I'm, I'm not going to question Lee Matthews because of his who he knowledge is. of football. Yeah, obviously. his knowledge of football, and he's won three flags. But yeah, yeah. And see where he's coming from, but I don't think he's overrated at all. I don't either. So, what? do you think he's a top ten player in the competition? Because a lot of I don't people think any is a top ten. Well, a lot of people rate him that high. So, if people are rating him that high, then he's overrated. If you don't think that, uh, that that's that's a fair point. I, I'm gonna <sighs> like co- a, I'm gonna contradict myself here. I don't think he's top ten. Okay. But he's... You have to be doing a lot to be top 10. Ab- absolutely. A You've got to have an influence almost every oh, week. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he's he's very close to doing that. But he's not a top 10 player, but he's a top two ruckman in the competition. A player who was also very good on the weekend was Matthew Pavlich. What do you think of his performance, Josh? Yeah, yeah very good. Uh, very good. Um, he beat Michael Hurley quite comfortably. Um, it was probably the only game that Hurley's been beaten this year so far. Yep. Um, <clears throat> and that's that's no fault of Michael Hurley because of the pa- the co- type of player Matthew Pavlich is. Yep. Um, it's he, likely that <coughs> Fletcher would have taken him, isn't it? No. He wouldn't have. Hur- Hurley would have taken him. Oh, okay. um, but, yeah, pa- Pavlich was best on ground for mine. Um, simple as that. He's, he led from the front. Uh, kick big big goals. Uh, oh, yeah. The, the, the one, goal in the first the one just, uh, just before <coughs> half time was yeah. just yeah. phenomenal. So... Now, last time these two teams met at the SCG, it was actually a draw. Who are we going to tip this week? I can't go past the Dockers and I can't tip Fremantle. So, free, I can't tip Sydney. You can't go past the Dockers but you can't <laughs> tip Fremantle. That's, um, that's an interesting point. Please tell me more. I think he's there. tipping another draw, to be honest, <laughs> from that analysis. There's one for the blooper reel. Uh, Fremantle by 29, Vinay. I'm definitely going to say Fremantle. Sydney has shown me nothing and I'm tipping Freo by about 30. It's be harsh on him next time. Uh, Fremantle by 25 points, yeah. Sydney just haven't quite shown me enough to say that they'll, they will beat um, last year's runner-up. Um, next game of the round, West Coast versus Port Adelaide, Saturday night at Patterson Stadium. Two teams in the top four at the moment. Who predicted these two to be in the top four at this stage of the season? Um, last time these two teams played, it was Port by five points at Amy Stadium, I believe it was. Josh, what's your take? Um, I really like the way Port Adelaide are playing their football. Uh, they... Ran out of legs, funnily enough, against North Melbourne two weeks ago. But I bounced back. Um, in a big way. In a big way, arguably against Brisbane, who aren't travelling that well. But you still got to do the work. Still got to do the work. And yeah. they certainly did. I think that game kicked Travis Boak's season off. He was quiet oh, the first three weeks. Touches he was my Brownlow Smokey, so it was good to see him, actually. <laughs> Four, well, my Brownlow Smokey's been ruled out, so that's unlucky. Nate anyway, Five, yeah. Tom Rockliffe, you, oh. you were Nate Five. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but they both ruled out. Anyway, Travis Boak had 41 touches, kicked a goal as well, led from the front. I think that just might be the game that kicks starts his season. Um, I think it's this is a pretty open and shut game for me, in a sense. I think, to me, if West Coast gain some kind of respite from their injuries this week, then they are favourites. But if they don't, then I can't... The only reason I'm saying this is because the players that they've got in at the moment, replacing Lacra, Hearn, Shuey, you know, Waters, the list goes on. They're huge outs. They're massive outs. And the guys that they've... And Rosa, the guys they've got in playing for them, are just kids. Like, they've got kids like College and Lysette and, you know, McGinnity. McGinnity's not a kid, but they're very, relatively inexperienced. And... To be thrown in automatically and be like, here's you're at, Ge- you're at Skilled Stadium, S- Simon Stadium, play Geelong, win for us. Simmons. Simmons. It's a huge ask, you know, and I think the fact that it's a Patterson's might make a difference, but having said that last year, they showed that Patterson's isn't necessarily their be-all, end-all fortress, the same way Fremantle did in a way. There's that word, fortress. Yeah. So, I don't know. To me, I'm, I'm, I was thinking about holding off on my tip just to see who comes in and who goes out for West Coast. Yep. Um, but at this stage, I'm tipping Port Adelaide by about 10. I think Nick Natnu is in trouble as well. Yeah. Uh, he went to, got subbed out. Got yeah. subbed out. Yep. Looked really, really sore. Yep. He is in doubt for this week. Nick, what are your thoughts? Um, well, one point I want to raise. I promise I'm not bragging here. Yeah. But West Coast did um, fail to kick a goal for three quarters. Oh, um, the in- yes, they lost the inside 50 count by 30. We, we know they've got some huge outs, yeah. but um, those aside, is there a problem there that they struggled to get forward inside 50, Vinay? 
There's definitely a problem. Look, they, they lost... They were behind by 80 marks. They were behind by 100 disposals. They were behind by 30 inside 50s. And they were behind by 26 tackles. So, you know, those are massive numbers. I, I don't... I disagree with that, both of you, to be honest. I, I don't think there's anything wrong. It's one game. Uh, West Coast were out without those names, Lacrosse, we must and whatever. No, that's exactly what you I'm saying. The, there, yeah. You throw them into the side. That's exactly they obviously what I'm had, saying. They yeah. obviously had some huge names. That's, out, that's yeah. literally what I'm saying. What I'm saying, I don't want to play the injury card. But what I am saying is that when you've got Shuey, Lacra, Maston, you know, these guys are all in the top 10 for the club. When you've got that many outs, it hurts not only the structure, but, you know, the fact that you have to play all these kids tends to hurt the team as well. I, I don't think it's a problem, though. You don't think that's a, no. the injuries are not an issue? No. Okay, interesting. What do you reckon, Nick? Um, well, you guys have well and truly convinced me um, about but West Coast. On, on the injury issue, what's your, what are your thoughts? Do you think it, how, big, injury, how big is the impact? On the injury issue, obviously, it's it was a huge detriment to the side. I, at a full-strength West Coast, I would have been very worried, West Coast coming to Simmons Stadium. Yeah. I would have been very worried the form that they were in, yeah. that they could get the job done. Yeah. Um, but with those injuries, I was supremely confident that Geelong would win yeah. comprehensively. I'd agree with that, yeah. Um, but I was, I was still a bit concerned about the West Coast depth. If these injuries become not short term but medium yeah, to long term that's true um the west coast could struggle to keep up the kind of form that right, that's yeah. that's my point there no it's a very good point you make um moving on to the tips and i think i'll go first because you guys have well and truly convinced me that with those injuries that west coast yeah. have unless there's some some serious ins this yeah. week that port adelaide in the form they win will get it done um i think port adelaide will win by seven points yeah Shuey will come back in after his one week suspension. Shuey will so, come back in for sure. Uh, he'll definitely come in. He's the only certainty. Only certainty, yep. No one, as Rosa should come back in. He was just out with soreness, but again, you never know. So yeah, I'll be tipping Port. Not confident, uh, but from memory, they do play Patterson's well. So uh, I think their fitness might be a bit stronger than West Coast, um, but I'll be tipping Port by one. Okay, I think a lot for me depends on you know the ins and outs. So don't be surprised if I change it. But yep, at this stage, Port's the better side. So I'm going to go Port Adelaide by ten. No worries. Uh, next game of the round it is Essendon versus St Kilda. Here we go. <laughs> Saturday night at Etihad Stadium. Hang on, the run sheet says Patterson Stadium. <laughs> I think that's. Uh, I think that might be a typo. I knew he was. <laughs> did you do that? Up did you that. do that? Nick actually asked that. Josh not to bring that up. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Uh, last time these two teams played, it was Essendon by thirty-seven points. Josh, what do you think? Uh, yeah, as as I said just previously, uh, I didn't really go into the Fremantle game with a hell of a lot of confidence. You didn't. Uh, I tipped Fremantle last week. I just couldn't see them um, letting two games go, especially one at home. How much confidence you got this time? I'm s- very confident in this week. Very confident. Very confident. Uh, he was about to say certain, but then he pulled back because he knew that. <laughs> he was about to say supremely <laughs> confident. <laughs> we should get our host of names back. Uh, Paul Chapman should come in. Dustin Fletcher. David Myers was ill with gastro. So Ryder he should, Goddard. He should be okay. Ryder should come back in. Goddard? Goddard is 50-50 at the moment, but okay. it's, the club is confident that he'll play. Jeez, those are just some small names to come back in. Just, just some small ones. But um, I, I like some play that we did against the one of the best sides in the competition. I just think there's two or three teams that are above everyone else, and we're in the next group of three to four. Mm. Um, so that top, yeah, fair that, that fourth spot, I think, is up for grabs. I reckon the top three are set. It's sort of like Hawthorne, Freeman, or Geelong. And then those it's top three. Hawthorne, Hawthorne Freeman, or Geelong. Yeah. yeah. And then you've sort of got the rest. Uh, <laughs> God. Yeah. Hope, I hope Hawthorne whack them this week. So do I. Just to wipe <laughs> that we'll, 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 we'll get there in a second. Come on, Hawkers. <laughs> but um, I, I like some play. Marty Gleeson, uh, I think he was absolutely oh, he was fantastic. I love that kid. Majestic. Uh, Majestic. I think that's the first time Vanay's played the Majestic. No, guy. I said he's a jet. Oh, he's a jet. <laughs> oh, right. He was majestic. He was. He was <laughs> some of the stuff he did was, was Strolling very impressive. through the midfield and just... However... Um, we did succumb to Fremantle's pressure, I think. Uh, we kind of rushed a little bit. Fremantle made us turn the ball over. I think uh, teams will look at that and put pressure on us. Yeah, yeah. We've just got to learn to, when we get the ball, be patient, wait for the right option and stuff to come. Before we move on to the Saints, um, Paul Chapman was a uh, late out, obviously, or was it, yeah, yes, late, late out. Um, do you think that's going to be a regular with interstate games this season to try and manage him through the year? No, I don't think so. Um, I think he might miss the occasional Melbourne game. Okay. Um, obviously it was a big it was a big game, but he did he did have that injury worry against Carlton and came off. He had a very sore ankle. Yeah. Um, I know that he trained indoors on Saturday. 
Uh, people are saying why name them if they were going to be out. Yeah. The final training session was on Saturday, so they gave him every chance to play, and they had the intention of playing him. Uh, Dustin Fletcher did train that game uh, that day on Saturday, yeah. but pulled up sore after training. So you got you got to name these guys, give them every chance. They had the intention of playing. Yep. Um, but pulled up so after training. And it's always a worry with Justin Fletcher, who's 38 years old, which everybody knows, and Paul Chapman, who missed um, almost all of last year with a hamstring issue. Um, they're in such brilliant form and so vital to the Essendon structure at the moment. It is it is a worry, and, and you do want to sort of err on the side of caution with these kind of players. Uh, absolutely, and I, I, I can see where everyone's coming from. You want to manage these players really, really well, and that's what Bomber Thompson did so well at Geelong. Yep. Yep. He managed yep, the players well. True. But... We're not Geelong. Yeah, uh, we we don't have the quality on our list. Uh, we're getting there. We are getting there. Uh, we're not going to win three flags in six years, but uh, we're getting the quality on the list. But we don't have that quality and depth that Geelong had. Moving on to St Kilda, um, we I think we all tipped them against Adelaide, and we were we did. and we were pretty confident that they'll get the job done. And we're all kind of trying to hide from that a little bit at the moment. <laughs> I'm not uh, I'm not hiding from it because. Um, you, could, you couldn't tip Adelaide on their form. Yeah. You couldn't tip them. And I, I did say last week that I wasn't confident in tipping St Kilda. Yeah. I just knew Adelaide had had that in them to, to get the win. But just on that form, I couldn't tip them. We'll get on to Adelaide next, obviously. Yeah, yep. absolutely. But um, St Kilda, yeah, they, they had a down day. Uh, Reece Stanley came out today and said they don't want to be a mediocre side. Yep, he did. Uh, so they'll be looking to bounce back against yep. uh, my boys on Saturday night. I would definitely agree with that. At the moment, for me, they're looking better than Brisbane and Carlton, who are the other two struggling. St. Kilda are showing fight. Um, and although it's coming in patches, they're showing fight. Um, you know, they're not ready to just lie down and die yet. And the thing for me is that their rookies are really standing up. Josh Saunders came on in the second quarter as the sub. And what do you have, Josh? 20 touches. And 20 a goal. touches, 10 contested. Yeah, and a goal. So, and a goal. you know, and then Luke Dunstan was, again, I think their leading touch getter are up there. and He's been a revelation. Yeah, That's so, amazing. you know, their youngsters are really, really trying very, very hard for that side. Yep. And that's something that for any club, when you've got the youngsters trying their, you know, their hardest, it's going to lift your overall performance. And so it's it's great to see Nick Rewalt playing so well for this side that everyone tipped to be on the bottom this season. And he's really standing up and, and being that... Oh, for sure. Being that leader for the side and just um, someone for them all to turn to. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see who goes to him on Saturday night because Nick Rewalt has caused us a lot of problems. He causes everyone a lot well, of problems. That, that's true, but he, he does like playing against Essendon, so it'll be interesting to see who goes to him I don't on think Saturday Hurley, night. probably have to send Fletcher to him, wouldn't you? No, I think Hurley will get first grade. Again? Yep. Oh, no. Hurley's our number one defender at the moment. Okay, interesting. Wouldn't want Vinay coaching Essendon. He's got no idea now. No, I, I would not put Hurley on. Fletcher, Fletcher, Fletcher doesn't take the number one forward anymore. He's got the big go-go gadget arms. I know, I know that, but he can he can he plays on the third forward. Yeah, and nullifies their impact. Okay, and a lot of people say he's not that good. I mean, come on, the guy played on the Fletcher's not that good. Fletcher's not that Who good. Who says that? A lot of people. I'd like to meet the people that say Fletcher's <laughs> not that good. To be honest, people forget that Fletcher played on Lockett, Dunstall, Carey, Modra. Oh, geez, he's old. Fletcher probably played on Jesus <laughs> back in the back in BC. <laughs> Who are we lady. tipping, guys? Oh, come on, during. Who are we tipping today? <laughs> Thought I made a bit of an embarrassing mistake. I'm gonna go the Essendon Bombers by about sixty points, boys. <laughs> Essendon by 52 points oh, I'm very very confident in this game And I think we will bounce back Similar to the way Fremantle yep. bounce yep. back With um, those ins as well With those ins We like Eddie Had Stadium I think we'll win comfortably Our producer Justin Westhoff's just sitting here going Why do I even bother with this show <laughs> We've got an absolute crackerjack For the next game uh, Adelaide versus GWS Saturday afternoon at Adelaide Oval We say it every week That stadium looks amazing um, last time these two teams met, it was Adelaide by 135 points. If you do not mind, what do you think, Vinay? I think it'll be closer this time. I don't <laughs> think GWS will lose by 121 this year, to be honest. Okay. Um, they're, they're showing GWS the only weakness that I can see, the big one, I shouldn't say only, but one of the biggest ones, is their inability to run out games. And I remember that last week when I tipped the Bulldogs, I, the only reason I tipped them is because they have a better ability to run out games. GWS, they were looking very good for most of that game. And then they fell away. Their fitness is the only thing. Because these kids come out in the first two quarters and they give it absolutely everything. They come out in the third and they've been run off their feet. I think that's a really good point when they beat Sydney earlier in the year that they had that, what was it, a 20-minute break at quarter time. Yeah. With the, it helped them, With the it? lighting and houses and stuff. And everyone was sort of thinking, oh, who's this going to help, you know? Uh, yeah. Um, but GWS, they've only got to play three quarters. Then, exactly. And then, and then that last quarter where they always seemed to drop away didn't have to happen. Didn't have to happen. Exactly. Um, Excellent point you make, Nick. Yeah, so... 
Yeah, and that really cements Vinay's point there that yeah. just um, at the end of the game they really drop off. Yeah, and you know, I think we won't want to spend too much on this game, but you know, Adelaide, they came back, had some very good performances. Brody Smith and Scott Thompson came back in a big way after copying some critic the week before. Matthew Yench keeps up the 91% him. disposal efficiency for the year. He's just indomitable. At that's that's got to be best in the league. We probably should oh, check sure. that. Oh, for sure. 91% disposal he, efficiency. Eight is. marks, two contested, four tackles. You know, he was absolutely prolific. So I think they're doing some good things, Adelaide, which is why when we get to our tips, I will tell you who I tip. <laughs> in tip it'll be Adelaide. Josh, what's your thoughts? Uh, there was one player I'm really impressed it with at uh, the GWS Giants at the moment. And it's not a, a name that many people would think, oh, yeah, he's been good. That's Curtly Hampton. Curtly Hampton has been... See, Vinay's reaction Automatically, tells, yeah. tells me that uh, not many people... Do you ever know who he is? I do know who he is. I'm oh. a big fan of him, actually. <laughs> You're looking at me like you don't even know who he is. He no, was I'm just really, intently really, listening to He was a star junior. junior. He was an absolute star uh, of a junior. Absolutely. His running out of the fence has been fantastic. Yeah. Uses the ball well, takes a game on. That's what you want in a running defender. And he's been absolutely fantastic. Josh didn't give me enough credit here. I do know who Curtly Hampton is. <laughs> um, but that lively run that he has out of the back half is is very impressive. Um, you see it early on when the players in the back line might not have sort of the skill set, the disposal, which is quite so good. Yep. But you see the intent that he has, and it's brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. And Adelaide should regain Tom Lynch back this week. Had a massive display. Had 31 a, disposals. 10 goal Tom Lynch. Yeah, 10 goal Tom. Last time he played uh, the GWS Giants. Oh, was it last time he played GWS? Yeah. Well, there you go. I didn't he know kicked that. 10 goals. No <laughs> offense to Adelaide supporters, but he has got to be the most mediocre player to score 10 goals after Carl Reimers. Oh. After Carl Reimers. <laughs> <laughs> to kick that. Carl kicked eight. Carl kicked eight. Yes. Oh, good. Thank you. So goodness. he is the most mediocre player to score 10 goals. that's harsh. He's improved a lot. He's a good player, but if you kick, can. Kick the most. Hang I on, know, hang on. I know, I know, uh, no, he kicked 10 goals in one game last year. Yep. But still managed to lead the goals at Adelaide last year. So I think it might be a little oh, harsh on Oh, come on. Their forward line last year. Who do they have? He's like Bryce Gibbs with the number one draft Walker was down to the surgery ward. <laughs> they had old old man bloody, what's his name? The little Callanan. Oh. They had Go old on, man boys. Callanan running around. And he I retired. think it been harsh on him. <laughs> anyway, anyway tips, tips, our tips. Tips, tips, tips. <laughs> Uh, Adelaide by 22 points. I think GWS will keep with them for most of the game, but drop off in the final quarter. I'm going to tip Adelaide by a whopping 40 points. 40. That's not whopping. It's not whopping. It's not really uh, Adelaide by 31. 135 last time they played. The Melbourne versus Gold Coast. Over. Melbourne versus Gold Coast. Sunday afternoon at the MCG. Last time these two teams played, it was Gold Coast by 13 points. Vinay, what's your take on this game? Another one that we won't spend too long on, but I think this will be a very, very interesting game because Melbourne... With Chris Dawes, they showed something. With James Frawley, they showed something. Josh has frequently highlighted the fact that Melbourne's biggest weakness this year is the lack of forward options. They had those forward options, but boom, they beat Carlton. And all credit to Chris Dawes especially. Um, I was watching on, I think it was Ed and Derm's new program, which was terrible, by the way. <laughs> um, the Chris Dawes, he went to every single coach and he, he wasn't 100%. He knew he wasn't 100%. And we always say, you know, if they're 100%, if they're not 100%, why are they playing? But he said, I need to play this game. I know I can have an impact on this game. And he really did. I think he kicked two goals, but he took a lot of contested marks. He was very impressive. What, it, what Chris Dawes does, he gives them a target. Yeah. He does. He gives them a target. He's a big man. To. First three games, they did not have that target. He, he comes into the side. He's a big man. He's played in the premiership. He's got the experience. You kick it to him, he's either going to take the mark or bring it to ground. And you're never going to have those un uncontested defensive marks when you've got that big forward target that you're aiming at, which really kills the side and kills your forward 15. What happens is that with the inexperienced teams, what they'll do is they'll try and double team him just because he's a big target. What that means, you know, chaos ball, ball out the back. You've got a loose man in your forward line. Yep. They've got plenty of good small forwards. It just know. creates the 50-50 contest exactly. in a dangerous position. They've got more than enough good small forwards. Shannon Burns, Jay Kennedy Harris, you know, he's looking good. So if they can get the ball to ground, I reckon they're a threat. Uh, Jeremy Howell. Yep. So um, on the flip side of that coin, Gold Coast were looking good against Hawthorne for yeah. some of the game. And then Hawthorne just went... Hawthorne just Another went... Another Yep. Chuk -chuk. Hawthorne Another just... Gate. They said, thanks for coming, Gold Coast, but we're just going to lift now and make sure that nobody confuses this as a close game. So, you know, they're a good side, they're Gold Coast, and um, I think probably it'll be a very good game. Yeah, bottom, like a bottom of the ladder kind of clash, but still a very good game. Sam May was pretty good for the Gold Coast. He's I been good all year, I think. He's been good all year, yeah. yeah. Good to see him standing up. Absolutely. He, he's uh, given a chop out down in defence. I don't know why, but they're playing Rory Thompson at both ends. He was one of the best Swing young. Man. He was one of the best young defenders last year, and they. they I uh, Blue McKenna's getting a bit of leopard speaking syndrome. Speaking of both ends, what about Frawley down forward for the D's? Oh, hello! 
Hello. Jimmy Frawley. Team of the week. Almost, wor- slipped, almost slipped Rick up. All this talk about free agency and $700,000 contracts. and 800000 800000 and Which he's denied that he's asked for. But anyway. uh, 24 disposals, 14 marks, two goals on the weekend against the Blues. I tell you what, it's having a player like that in a new position, um, playing very well in a, in a role that Melbourne are desperate for someone to stand up in. That's the kind of thing that you think at the oh, end of the season, sure. that could change his mind. Oh, if, for sure. That could turn his career, exactly. could completely turn his career around and change his mind. If that's a, if that's a regular thing, I'm not sure if it's yeah, going to be. It should be going on. Yeah. Going on this week's performance. Anyway, boys, moving on to the tips. Tips. What do you think, Josh? Uh, Gold Coast. Gold Coast? Uh, by how just, much? Just can't tip Melbourne at the moment. I just haven't don't. shown enough. They've shown something. They, show, they showed something last week. Uh, Congratulations on the win over Carlton, by the way. That was great to see. Abso- absolutely. Good to see uh, the Ds get up as happy as I was. But anyway, uh, the Ds to get up, it was fantastic. Um, but yeah, I, I don't have enough to tip them at the moment. Yeah. So I'll be tipping Gold Coast by 35. Um, I've got Gold Coast by 18 this week. I think they've been very good so far. Melbourne, they, they really stood up last week, but Gold Coast will just be too good for them. I don't mind Chris Dawes. You know, a lot of people don't like him. I'm actually a fan of him. I want to see him come back and do well. Yeah. You know, he's a very well-spoken man. He's a very, you know, friendly guy on and off the field. He works hard. And, you know, what you were saying really, you know, spoke to me. The fact that he's gone to these coaches and said, you know, get me in there. That tells me a lot about his character, but I am going to tip Gold Coast by about 20. Um, the second last game of the round, it is the Western Bulldogs versus Carlton, Sunday afternoon at Etihad Stadium. Last time these two teams met, it was West Coast, I've written by 28. I think You're it was horrible. probably the Western Bulldogs that won that game. <laughs> You're horrible. This is another one we, we won't be spending too much on. You know, I mean, you could wrap this up in about a couple of minutes. Really. Carlton. Uh, Carlton. Carlton oh, I, I want Josh. I want Josh. I'm going to stay out of it. You're going to stay. I'm going to let Josh Rickard, because he is... He is if, if Carlton was... I'm going to let Josh do the talking. He's going to give Carlton an absolute... He's going to give them a colonoscopy. Ladies so and gentlemen... Gonna you, I'm going to give you one minute, Rickard. I want you to analyse this game and I want you to give us your tip at the end. Ladies and gentlemen, Josh Rickard. Josh Rickard. <laughs> Put the pressure on me. I didn't know this was coming. Anyway. Time starts now. Carlton, they were deplorable last week. They've been deplorable all year and there's two players that I think should be dropped. Should be dropped. Probably won't be. No, won't be. One is the captain, Mark Murphy. Oh, oh no! He, Regard roast. Oh my god. He? No, I'm dead serious here. This is why I wanted him to go. Go ahead. Drop dead the serious. captain. He, sack the coach. <laughs> he is the softest captain <laughs> in the AFL. I'm not even kidding. True. The softest True. captain in the AFL. True. He lacks leadership, and he's. On-field work is absolutely horrible at the moment. He should be dropped, and if Mick Mouldhouse are set, he'd do it. How did that look-away handball go the other week? It was panic. Panic. Panic, panic, panic is all it was. Who's the second person you got there, Ricard? The $700,000 man. Oh, not DT. DT, Dale Thomas. Daisy. I'm dead, dead serious. His form is not worthy of a $700,000 player. Yep. He has been very ordinary. He is not having the impact on a on a game that he should, and he's kicking further on his left foot than he is his right foot. He is, and that's saying something. I saw an excellent statistic today: eighty-two percent of his disposals have been short. He's not he's not playing the penetrating, damaging footy that he was known for at Collingwood. He's not he's not showing that run he showed at Collingwood. He's not having the impact that he had at Collingwood. He's got to be the one that says, "Okay, I've come to this club. I want to make an impact." He's got to do it against the Western Bulldogs this week. On that note, speaking of the Western Bulldogs, Vinay, what do you think of their form at the moment? I thought that they were pretty. They were very good a couple of weeks ago, obviously, to get the winner over Richmond. Yep. And um, who did they play this week? I'm drawing. GWS. Points. GWS. <laughs> they won. Uh, I thought they were reasonably good again. You know, patchy side. They're another one of those sides that you're never really confident in tipping them, but you think they can get the job done. And on that note, I am going to trigger us into our tips, and I'm going to kick us off by saying the Bulldogs will win by about 20 points. 20 points. Uh, I think the Western Bulldogs last week, before I get my tip, we should give a bit more on the Bulldogs. <laughs> uh, they were challenged, and they fought back. And I think they were down by four goals a quarter time, yep. and they chipped away, chipped away, chipped away. Uh, Sean Higgins has come back from this oh, injury. He was excellent. Known as the burn man in f- fantasy uh, fantasy world. Team of the week. Team of the week this week. Uh, he had 29 touches. He was fantastic, giving a lot of runoff halfback. Uh, he looks to be over that injury, which is fantastic. Touch wood. Um, <laughs> even though that's plaster, but anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but he, he's been fantastic. So 
Uh, another one was Matty Boyd. We saw the old Matty Boyd against oh, the Giants. Oh, the racking up Boydy. The Team racking of the week as well, yeah. Contest ball and everything like that. So we saw the old Matty Boyd on the weekend, which is fantastic. I'd like to see him go again uh, this week. The Bulldogs love the contested footy. Absolutely love the contested footy. So it's going to be no easy feat for Carlton again this week coming up against a team that burrows in. Who are you tipping? I'll be tipping the Bulldogs. Bulldogs by 21. Um, I think it'll be very, very close, but I think the Western Bulldogs will just get the job done. Uh, eight points, which brings us to the match of the round. Oh, here we go. The blockbuster. The match of the season. The dun, match dun, of your dun. lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> every bloody time these two teams play. Hey, tell me this isn't the best game of the season every time these two teams play. No. no. Oh, Come off it. They're wrong. Anyway, Geelong Free versus... And Essendon were Anzac last year. Geelong versus Hawthorne Anzac Monday afternoon at the MCG. I'll be at that game and I don't know how I'm going to get to this show on time after the game. We'll see how we go. Uh, last time these two teams played... Can somebody else read it out for me? Hawthorne won in the prelim. <laughs> they did. But the by, 11... By a whole five points. But the 11 occasions before And who was that, leading at three-quarter time? Oh, Geelong. Geelong was leading at three-quarter time. Oh, I tell you What? Three quarters, Geelong kept West Coast goalless four on the weekend. <laughs> the noose <laughs> was I, tightened. In all, in all seriousness, I thought that was one of our best performances in quite a while. Um, I know West Coast were undermanned, but Geelong really, really, oh, yeah. Geelong really, really choked the opposition. I thought Enright, Mackey, Taylor and Lonigan, all of them were great down back. Rivers played, well, the best game for Geelong, clearly. Um, I won't speak for Melbourne fans and say it's the best game of his career, but it would have been up there. He was very, very good down back. Um, all over the park it was, I was very very impressed with the Geelong side what were your guys thoughts on the game I think this will, this will be probably the game of the round by far and probably yeah, it has, oh, easily it has it's 1v2 yeah and it has the potential to be the best game that we've seen so far this year just because the quality of football that will be played is going to be off the charts Hawthorne and Geelong have produced the best football not just this season but they're playing some really really good football the, the football Hawthorne's playing, I haven't seen footy this good for a while, for a while, since Geelong's premiership year. They're playing some mean football. And Geelong, they've got these youngsters that are coming up. One guy that's really impressed me, I watched him myself. Yep. I didn't really believe him, believe in him that much. But Cam Guthrie, he's really, really moving up in my books now. He's... You know, Nick was telling me about him before the game. I was like, oh, it's just Nick going off about one of his other jobs. <laughs> but he is a genuinely good player and he's got captaincy potential, if I'm not mistaken. I've been in Rickard's ear the entire season telling him, give him the unsung hero nomination. Oh, I said it to me once and that was this week. Outside of the club. Getting back to Geelong. Outside of the Hawthorne. club, Cam Guthrie is, is so much better than people. He's just not being noticed. It's not like he's being underrated. But he's just, he's just come from nowhere yeah. last season. And this season, he's moved to the midfield. He's been absolutely brilliant. Another young midfielder who's doing great this season is George Holland-Smith. He came in, he played a shutdown role on Scott Pendlebury last week, as well as picking up 20 disposals himself, and he was very good. And then this week he came, he played a shutdown role on Gaff, I believe it was. Yes, it was. On top of that, he had 24 disposals himself. Yep. Um, I think he was... He matched Gaff. Touch for touch. Yeah. Gaff finished on 24. Horn Smith finished on 24. But Playing the, the shutdown there, yeah, role. The thing there is that Gaff is meant to be one of our chief ball winners. So. Yeah. Um, and on the other end of the scale, you've got Joel Selwood, who's always been good. But I think his form this season, he's in career best form. He's kicking three goals every week. Um, he's having, you know, 10 tackles, 10 clearances. He's absolutely... On the, on the other side of this moment. coin, presenting the case for the Hawthorne Football Club, <laughs> their number one advocate... Number one advocate. Tell us what they're doing right, Rickard. Come on. Tell us what they're Number doing. Number one advocate. After Jeff Kennett. Oh, right. <laughs> Tell eh? us what they're doing, Rickard. Right. Oh, we'll eh? be here all day. Hang on. Oh, <laughs> Come on, you two. Jeez. All right. No, but honestly, like you know, you were right to say that Hawthorne could go through this season undefeated. I, still I want stand you to by look it. in the camera and tell those people what they're doing right now that makes them that strong. They are playing the best football I've seen in fifteen years. <laughs> fifteen years. <laughs> Got, did, uh, you, did you not watch Geelong in 2007? I did. No, I did. I'll, I'll let him give him a chance. Okay, go on, go on, go on. I put them up against the Essendon of 2000. Oh, the Herds, the Lloyds, the Lucases. They've got a very similar side to what Essendon had in 2000. They are playing that good of a football at the moment. I cannot see anyone beating them. And I could be sitting here next Monday night with Geelong winning that day and look like an idiot. But I'll stand oh, here you will. <laughs> I'll stand here right now and say I cannot see anyone beating them at the moment. One thing I will say before we do tips and all that jazz is that I will say that last, this time last year, I was not sure who'd win the grand final. I thought it'd be a tussle between Collingwood, Geelong, Sydney, Hawthorne, Freeman. This year, I'm almost deadly certain that these Hawks will win that grand final. Watching them play, 
It's poetry in motion. Just from one end to the other, they do it so seamlessly. It's frightening. And Schoenmakers, Sewell, Lake, uh, Stratton, Stratton, they all played in the VFL for Box Hill. So they are a good chance to come back. Who do you, who do you take out? <sighs> probably all Jeray probably be in there. Cheney probably get the boot. The, the, the thing is they've lost probably a half of football all year. The other... The other games and the other half of that game, they've absolutely dominated Demolished. their depo- opponent. I'm saying it now. Matt Suckling is the best kick in the AFL. I agree with you. He's the best kick in the AFL. Like watching him kick the ball, it's unbelievable. He'll get the ball. He'll have about two seconds to steady himself, and he'll spear a pass onto the chest of a wingman about 40 metres away on the run. It's immaculate, his delivery. And that's two games in a row where he's had over 30 touches as well. Now, boys, before we get to the tips, I'm pretty sure I know who you're tipping from that conversation there. Um, and I know that most people will be tipping Hawthorne because everyone is looking at Hawthorne at the moment. They're seeing they're getting these 100-point wins. and they're What's thinking, your final word for Geelong? I haven't got a 100-point win yet. You're about to hear it. Yeah. Wasn't that 100? Oh, 99 it was. Yeah, I want to oh. hear his final conclusion. Go ahead. Anyway, Technicality. My point here is Hawthorne, at the end of the game, which junk time a lot of people call it, they love to pile on the goals. So the game is already won and they, I, I find it almost unnecessary sometimes. They will... These boys, bloody hell. They'll pile... No, but seriously, in the last quarter, you'll see them pile on 10 goals and that margin, which... It's it's inflated. It's inflated, which otherwise would have been, you know, a a, a 40 or a 50 point, still very convincing win, turns into an 80 or a 100 point win. And people... Wait. People look at that and they say, that is amazing form. Now, here's my reason why this is a 50-50 game. Geelong, they get into that same position where they have choked the opposition out of the game, like they did to West Coast on the weekend. They had absolutely dominated West Coast in every area of the ground. But did they pile on those goals? No, they didn't. They sort of relaxed towards the end of the game. They could have easily won that game by 100 points, 120 points, but they took the foot off the pedal. And that's every... Geelong never pile on those goals in junk time like Hawthorne do. And that is why I think this game is a 50-50 game. I think these teams are in just as good a form as each other at the moment. I don't think Hawthorne are that head and shoulders above the Geelong and the Fremantle like you are saying they are. You know what that says? Hawthorne is a four-quarter side. Their fitness is off whether the they're a, Whether they're a four-quarter side or not, that extra 10, call, 10 goals that they put on in the fourth quarter isn't going to win the close games. It'll get the percentage, though. It'll get the percentage, so that doesn't bother me. But it, in could, a, it could be the difference between a top spot and second spot. But in this game on Monday, or in a grand final. final in September, when these two teams, it's close at the end, <laughs> the how good they are in junk time isn't going to make the difference. It's how good they are when the heat is on, when the game is close, and when the heat is on, these teams are just as good as each other. I tell you what, I cannot wait for this game. I am absolutely... I, I just can't wait for it. I wish I could sleep tonight and then wake up on Monday morning. I must say, watch the game. even in the prelim, which we lost, it is a privilege to watch these two teams play. They just, against each other, they both just step it up another notch and they just, they put on the best performances. Like it's, the last five games I've seen between these two teams are the best five games of football I've ever been to in my life. It's just, it's a privilege to watch. Can't wait for it. Speaking of which, tips boys, this is where we get into the nitty gritty. Who wants to go first? Guys, man, I'm going to let you, uh, it'll be Geelong. I'm telling you. I'm backing my boys in. They are in just as good a form as Hawthorne at the moment. These two teams are unbeaten for a reason. And the junk time goals that Hawthorne are putting on isn't going to make the difference in what will be a close game. It will be Geelong by four points. I'm sorry, mate, but I disagree with that so, so much. I know you do. So, so much. And I'm looking forward to next Monday so I can tell you all All it shows is that Hawthorne is a four-quarter Don't miss out on next week's episode, by the way. That's all it shows. But anyway, I can't go past Hawthorne. They're, They're just playing too good a footy. Uh, Hawthorne by 32 points. Well, I take Nick's points. He makes some very good points. The best team in the AFL will win this game. I'm tipping Hawthorne by 21 points. I'm going to love rubbing it in next week, boys. I'll tell you that. Gee, what I hope you win with a comment like that. <laughs> anyway, that bring, brings that us to the round it up, boys. of another show Beyond the Boundary. It certainly does. It's been a fantastic show again. Probably a bit lengthy. Uh, we'll try and cut down on that. But We are still working on that. We are still working. We're trying to be as detailed as possible, but... Yeah. Uh, in a shorter amount of time, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, this announcement's not happening. Uh, we'll get to that next week. Um, but if you'd like to send us an email, btbafl at live.com.au. Our Twitter handles at Guyson, at Jay Rickard, at VK Latch. Uh, subscribe in the yep. top right uh, corner. Yeah, Make sure you send us some feedback, whether it's a light in your bot- a like in the bottom right corner or a comment. We absolutely love the feedback and it helps us out a heap. No, no matter if it's positive or negative, we take it all on board. It's yeah. it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, we do our best. Uh, we're three 
amateurs at the moment. Yep. Just talking about footy, so uh, we really enjoy any feedback that you give us. And just another reminder, don't forget to check out AFL Season Information and Off-Season News on Friday night to get our revised tips. If anything's changed or even if nothing's changed, we'll post them there on Friday night um, just in case there's any, any major changes later in the week. And thank you to Valiant. Thank you to Valiant as well. They've been fantastic. Boys, been a cracking show. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Nick, we'll see you next week. Good luck to your cats on Monday. Oh, we won't need it, boys. <laughs> but hey, good luck to your eagles on Saturday night. Saturday night. Thanks to our producer, Justin Westhoff, as always. Uh, we'll see you next week. No good luck for us. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> see you later.